Now, normally in the course of these videos, I like to talk about Mets prospects. But in this kind of video, I want to talk about a major league player and a big major league player and, and uh, Padres outfielder and was with the Nationals for many years, uh, outfielder Juan Soto. Now, the word is from San Diego is that the Padres are going to move Juan and they're going to trade him. And I'm going to give you a proposal of a trade uh, that the New York Mets should make and can make uh, if they trade a few of their prospects while still holding on to their top-notch talent. And before we get into this, you want to find out what's going on. You, I want to read you the different scouting reports of all these different players but in the middle of this video. But before that, you need to subscribe so you know what's going on. So here we go. So as you know, the Mets uh, had a disastrous 2023. They traded Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, Mark Hanna, uh, David Robertson, Tommy Pham, Dominic Leone, and they brought in a whole bunch of different prospects. Uh, and over the course of that time, they were able to improve their farm system. Now, through your farm system, you know that you can improve your team greatly by bringing these players up. You can also, and then and, and, and you sprinkle them in with your veterans, or you just have an all-young team, and you try to contend that way. Now, not every player uh, that comes up through your system that's a prospect will make it to your team. They will get traded. And once in a while, a player comes along, you have to do a big trade, a big major trade that will uh, improve your major league ball club. And uh, obviously, Juan Soto is one of these players that the Mets are going to be connected to in this offseason in terms of star power, in terms of the need that they have uh, on the major league level. I'm not going to talk too much about the major league level too much in this video. But you have to be smart about who you trade. Uh, you have to be smart enough to know what teams have needs and also where they have their best prospects. Uh, as I do this video and I came up with this trade, um, one of the things I knew about the San Diego Padres is they have one of the they have the best catching prospect in all baseball, and and Ethan Salas. He's a catcher. And he's about 17, 18 years old. He was just recently signed uh, by the Padres. So right off the bat, you tell yourself, all right, they're not going to be interested in Francisco Alvarez. Alvarez is going to be the catcher anyway. But we also know that the Mets' number number two uh, catching prospect is Kevin Parado, their number one pick from last year. Uh, so you can hold on to him. Um, so obviously with that need, and he is the ninth best prospect according to MLB Pipeline. We mentioned about Salas. He's considered a, right now. He's considered a top ten prospect, and his defense is considered so superior that at 17, 18 years old, he could be a major league player. These are the things I've learned and have read over the last month and a half or three months, whatever the length of this channel has been. This has been a a lot of fun doing this channel. But going through this, you know, and I know that they they want to uh, pare down the payroll now. Trey Juan Soto is not going to do that, but obviously uh, they are trading Soto based off a of weakness because the rumor is the Padres are trying to, pay, you know, pare their payroll down from over three hundred million to two hundred million. So and obviously Soto is going to be looking for a lot of money. He's going to be looking for at least a ten-year, if not fifteen-year contract. Uh, I would assume. I, I believe that uh, Scott Boros is his agent. That's kind of what that's the kind of ballpark, especially uh, considering that Soto currently is 24 years old, and a lot of the players, most players, are average age is made 22, 23, 24 years old when they meet, when they reach the majors. And Soto has obviously been uh, a major league player for five full seasons, and we enter in his sixth full season next year, and who knows what he'll be. But in this video, you're going to find out right now who I predict and should the Mets trade. If this trade were to happen. This first piece is the Mets fourth best prospect. Now I'm not going to give you any analysis. Other than to give you their scouting reports. And based on uh, what scouts and um, objective observers has, has said about these different players. So at number four. The Mets best prospect at number four is Ronnie Mauricio. Mauricio has been brimming with. And this is from MLB Pipeline. 
Mauricio has been brimming with potential since signing out of the Dominican Republic for $2.1 million in July 2017. But now entering his age 22 season, the rubber is meeting the road. Switch hitting infielder put up back-to-back -back seasons with a 296 on base percentage in 21 and in 2022, the latter coming entirely double A Binghamton. He did set career highs in home runs, extra base hits, and stolen bases during his 123 game stay in the Eastern League. He also he's also coming off an MVP campaign in the Dominican Winter League. After hitting 287 with a 335 slug uh, on base and a 468 slugging percentage in 46 game for Lysi. Mauricio looms large in the box at six foot three and can make loud impact upon contact from an open stance, especially when hitting from the left side, where he has better slugging numbers. It's that contact part that's been a huge has been a major issue. Mauricio can get expand, aggressive and expand the strike zone with his massive cuts, particularly against spin, leading to a 4.4% walk rate, lowest among Mets minor league qualifiers. Now facing advanced pitchers and advanced pitching in the upper minors, he'll have to make adjustments quickly to prove he's capable of being more than an all-power little hit. It's long been assumed that the three-time uh, MLB.com organization All-Star would move off shortstop eventually because of his size and below-average speed, especially as he bumps up against Francisco Lindor and Queens. That change has come in 23, with Mauricio getting looks at second base and left field with AAA Syracuse. He might be a better fit in the corner outfield spot where he's got more and more time in July and August. Now here is what I think should be another piece that's going back uh, in return uh, from Juan Soto. And this is all from MLB Pipeline. And this is the Mets' sixth best prospect. Outfielder first baseman, Ryan Clifford. This is from MLB Pipeline. They were scouting for it. Clifford first played for US Na the U.S. national team at ages 12 and won gold medals at international events with the 12 and under squad in 2020, 2015 and the 15 under club in 2018. Though he was regarded as one of the better all-round hitters in 22 prep class, he didn't dominate the show class circuit and he was committed to Vanderbilt, so he wound up sliding to the 11th round. Signed for $1.3 million, the equivalent of the late second round money, he had 247 with two homers and a 25-game pro debut split between rookie ball and single A. He climbed quickly from single A to high A in his first full season and had a 903 OPS at the higher level before being traded to the Mets with Justin Verlander at the deadline. I mentioned about Clifford. He was with the Astros. Clifford's approach is more mature than that of most players his age. As he works counts and focuses on hard contact, he has the bat speed and projectable strength to develop 20 to 25 home run power and he does a good job of letting his power come naturally. He has a pretty left-handed swing and an efficient bat path. Though his 30% strikeout rate in his introduction to pro ball show he'll need to do a better job of recognizing off-speed pitches. While Clifford possesses just fringy speed and could slow down as he gets stronger, he works hard to improve his quickness and defense. His reads and routes need to improve, but he has solid arm strength and can get the job done at an outfield corner. He has also got ample looks at first base to pro, though he'll need to hit jumps if he lands there long term with the New York Mets. Now, the next prospect that I've mentioned in other videos on my other big channel um, is a pitcher who is the closest minor league player and, and closest minor league pitcher uh, to the major leagues, and that is right handed pitcher Mike Vassell. Mets drafted him in 2021. He was an 8th overall pick, 232 overall. It's the 8th round. And here's his scouting report. A possible high 2018 pick out of Boston College High School, Vassal opted to head to the University of Virginia following an arm injury that may have dinged his stock. He was inconsistent in his three years as a Cavalier, causing him to fall to the 8th round to the Mets in 2021. He, spot, he sported... A 3.53 ERA of 85 strikeouts and 71 in the third innings last season. Mostly a single A and high A. But he was limited due to forearm tightness and bone spurs in his elbow. He made up for the lost time with six Arizona Fall League appearances. The Mets immediately got to work on getting Vassal more athletic in his delivery 
and eliminated the two seamen that sat 91 to 92 miles per hour in college. He averaged 93 to 95 miles per hour with his newly reworked four-seamer. Though velocity could be inconsistent and he had good spin in the 2300 to 2500 RPM range. He also credited New York for working on his upper 80s cutterish slider, making it more vertical to help play off the high heat. His low 80s curveball with good downward bite accomplishes the same goal, while his mid 80s changeup is a clear fourth pitch that shows some potential. Vassell's walk rate was downright stellar at Double A Binghamton to begin 2023, given added faith that he can be a future major league starter. The control has gone a little wayside as he's been squeezed by the ABS system at Triple A, but he should still throw enough strikes to compete for a job in the New York rotation coming out of spring. And finally, finally, the last uh, player and, and a proposed trade that I'm coming up with um, is another pitcher. It's another pitcher. He is the Mets' 16th best prospect. And he's a he's right-handed pitcher. He's in double A. And his name is Dominic Hamill. He's a, another 2021 draft pick on the third round, 81st overall. After being draft eligible four times between high school, junior high, and Dallas Baptist, Hamill finally caught on as a Mets third round in 21 after he set a DBU record 136 strikeouts in 91 and two-thirds innings. New York sent the right-hander to single A St. Lucie and double and high A Brooklyn his first full season, and he pressed at both assignments by leading the Mets minor leaguers with 145 strikeouts and 119 innings. His 3.25 in that span also plays second among qualifiers in the system. The Arizona Nav is a favorite of anyone who loves spin rates. His 91 to 94 mile per hour fastball, which can touch the mid 90s on occasion, plays better than his velocity alone because of its spin and carry up in the zone. A low 80 slider shows special spin rates in the 28 to 3000 RPM range, and low level hitters couldn't handle that type of bite. His mid-70s curveball is also in the upper reaches of the 2000s spin rate, but his lack of velo allows it to hang a little longer, making it more of an average offering. At mid-80s fading changeup gives Hamill an option against lefties that breaks the other way from his slider, and he's credited that with improving as he's gotten more experience in pro ball, though it still has some ways to go. The former Patriot did battle some control issues with an 11% walk rate, Perhaps because such spinning pitches can be difficult to land in the zone consistently. He'll also be 24 for the entire 23 season, putting him on the older side for a pitcher in his second full season. The metrics give hope that his stuff should carry him into the upper levels and potentially a shot at the Mets rotation by 2024. So you let me know what you think about this. What do you think about the specific trade that I'm proposing? I would mention that the Mets cannot gut their farm system, but these prospects are considered highly uh, regarded. So you let me know what you think about it in the comments section. And thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the Prospect Hut and I'll see you later.